you know, it's really an excellent point because when a company goes public regular way, um, they don't, they're, they're limited in the amount that they can forecast. But then a SPAC, when it goes public, it, it doesn't have any earnings. It just has the funds in treasury bills. And then when it buys a company on reverse merger, they are able to create these forecasts, which, you know, you know, could be misleading depending on, you know, how, how they're pr projected. So there's been some changes and some innovation in this. So you have to kind of really dig into the numbers. And, and I would say this is where you need professional management. You know, this is still a relatively small market, although we seem to talk about it a lot in the media and there's hundreds of these companies. But in terms of total market cap, the SMAC market is, is, is still fairly small, only, only 100 billion uh, compared to like the S&P 500 at 27 trillion. And so, you know, in each one, and that's made up of 500 different companies. So you really need to get into the details way more than just the S1s to, to, to make an assessment here. Well, I know Wellspring Capital are, are very involved in this market. So can you give us a little bit of color of what the pipeline is looking like for the rest of the year and also the type of, of sectors that may be looking to go public via SPAC? So one thing to remember is, is SPACs are a technology. They're a financial technology. They're a way for companies to go public non-regular way uh, through reverse mergers into the into the SPAC vehicles. And so, you know, at Wellspring, we, you know, service clients in, in 32 states and, and all around the world. And, you know, we invest in diverse pools of, of, of SPACs and we try to not concentrate on different sectors. But, you know, we like all the, the general sectors that lead toward innovation and, and SPACs tend to be that vehicle for taking those type of companies public, whether it's in uh, sports gaming, whether it's in um, financial services or electric batteries and cars, et cetera. So we, we look for uh, teams that, that look to be disruptive within their industries. Now, Matt, the broader macro world is watching very closely what the Fed may or may not do with monetary policy later this year. Some talk about potential tapering by the end of this year. How do you think Fed's decisions on monetary policy are going to affect the overall appetite for SPAC deals? So it's, that's a good question. SPACs, if you buy them at par and interest rates go higher, will actually earn more money short run because the funds are held in Treasury bills. The Securities Exchange Commission mandates that they can be only held in treasury bills under six months and most SPACs only hold treasuries that are a couple months. So if, if interest rates actually go higher, the accrued interest within the SPACs would actually go up. Now, of course, a higher interest rate market may have some impacts on the equity market and may have some impacts on the ability for SPACs to successfully de-SPAC, but at least short run, the trust values would go higher. And because interest rates are so low right now, we're actually seeing some sponsor teams actually add money to trust uh, to make it more interesting for investors like ourselves. So that might go away as well if interest rates were higher. 